Anyone still send snail mail? You know the type, right? Caleb does, anyway. I don't know about the rest of you. Some of you make snail mail. And you hand deliver it with really nice cards. Some of you do that. Uh, but, but seriously, like, sometimes it's nice, though, to receive one, though, right? Like, sometimes in, in our mailbox, something shows up that I can tell, like, someone had to, like, a- attach a stamp to, and they had to write it with their own hand, or at least type it. Um, what about just in our modern world, hit send? There's, there's so many things, right? Are, are any of you email fiends? Email's still a thing. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, some of you have spam folders for a reason. Um, text messaging, messaging, are, are you on messaging apps and, and are you DMing people all the time? Do you, do you prepare a message and then hit send? Some of you, it's actually like, I, I find it's funny if I get something from my mom because it's like a line at a time rather than like, here's a complete thought, send, <laughs> like, you know, it's like one line, next, not, you know, it's a lot. Uh, but sometimes do you find we, we, actually send a message when we don't really have anything to say. Have you ever been there? Only a couple of us can admit that. But when we actually have something important to say, we share the message. We feel we need to because it's true, right? If a message is important enough, it must be sent. Uh, The subject today is the Lord's Prayer, but not the one you're thinking of. Uh, I heard a few people talk about this. This one's going to be from our reading this week. But what we call the Lord's Prayer is actually a a prayer the Lord gave for us. It's our prayer that he kind of gave to us. But we're actually going to look at the Lord's Prayer as in the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17. We're looking at that today. The other Lord's Prayer, some people call the high priestly prayer. The reason they call it that is because Jesus was interceding for his disciples, and you'll see even for us. Jesus prayed for his disciples. He also prayed for us. And you know we need this because prayer changes things. That's what we believe anyway. We all need prayer, and the world needs prayer. And Jesus prayed for us, which you'll see. And we can actually be a part of answering the prayer for the world. And so we're going to look at this today, knowing God means really having a relationship with him. Prayer is part of that. And knowing him, having this relationship, is where life begins and never ends. That's everlasting life. Jesus wants this for us and for the world around us. And so the question today is, how can we help? If in this passage, Jesus is about to complete his earthly mission and he's preparing to pass the baton on to his disciples, it's it's, you know, near the end of Holy Week. Imagine this happening right before things happen Thursday night, before what's going to be Good Friday that we're about to kind of celebrate and take part in together. And so he's about to pass the baton to his disciples, and he's praying to the Father. Actually, our last passage from last week, uh, the one from last week actually ends, and then this one picks up. It's about God's mission in his message for the world and to the world, that Jesus was sent into the world, and Jesus then sends us into the world. I don't know if you've heard this phrase before, live sent. It's something that even in the Wesleyan church, it kind of has an extra meaning around Pentecost, believing that the Holy Spirit's with us and we're sent into all the world. Well, before that happens for disciples, I think Jesus really defined the phrase live Sent. Live sent means that really your entire life revolves around God's mission that we've been sent into the world to make disciples so that more and more people can have a relationship with God. And, and here's really what I want you to know today. If you miss everything else or if you get sidetracked for a moment because a, a horn's kind of going off in, in the parking lot, not that that would ever happen or a phone would ever go off, nothing like that. But if you get distracted and you just need to know, like, what, what do I need to take home with with me today. It's this, that we are sent so that the world might believe that he was sent. Think about that for a moment. That, that's, really, that's really what it's all about. We are sent so that the world might believe that he was sent. So our passage is from this week's Lent reading. I've loved doing that together. It's not too late to still pick up, even if it's just for this last, this last week leading up to Good Friday, uh, leading up to Saturday before we celebrate the resurrection next Sunday. Uh, you can join us on Uversion. 
But uh, you'll see this on the screen. You'll see this in front of you. Uh, We're going to read this prayer uh, from John 17. What happened just before this is that that verse I left you with last week, Jesus told his disciples uh, all this wonderful stuff, and he said, I told you all this so that in me you may have peace. Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. And then this happens. After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, And Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accept it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world but for those you have given me because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me so they bring me glory. Now I'm departing from the world. They are staying in this world but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of your name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction, as the scriptures foretold. Now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so that they will be filled with my joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy by your truth. I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Father, we thank you for this prayer that this has been revealed and shared so that we can receive it today, and we're recognizing it wasn't just for those that were able to listen at the time, but it's even for us who Uh, eventually got to hear and and receive and then believe in this message. And so we pray as we look at it today that we would be changed by it and also that the world around us might be changed because of how we trust in you, how we believe in you, how we're united together and how we get to share this as we believe that you were sent and you're sending us into the world. And so would you encourage us? Would you lift us up? Would you help us as we get ready to go? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lot of themes that we see in this, in this passage, in this prayer. Um, themes of God's glory, our unity, and the world's hope. 
And really, it's all about God's mission and the message. Jesus wants us to know the gospel and to understand and experience God's love for us. There's this theme as we finish chapter 16 and start chapter 17 between being scattered and sent. He actually said just a few verses before this, he's like, the time's coming. Indeed, it's now here when you're all going to be scattered. So this is happening right after this prayer. Sure enough, people came. The betrayer had kind of set things up and they come to Jesus and take him away. And as that's happening, all the disciples that he was praying for in this moment are all going their separate ways. They're scattered, but he's talking about them being sent. That's something that happens not just after Good Friday, not just after Easter, but, but actually after the ascension. And he's, he's actually giving them um, this, this idea that they would be sent even before the Holy Spirit comes. They, they know that this is coming, but first they would be scattered. He says, yeah, the time is coming. Indeed, it's now here when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. And so as he's here praying with the Father, he's believing in that connection. And then from scattered to gathered, Jesus actually wants us, wants them, but also us to be where he is. He was praying, Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. And then he helps us to understand the way to eternal life. It's verse 3 of chapter 17. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, remember he's praying to the Father, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. So eternal life, again, John talks about this throughout his gospel account, eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ. That's eternal life. So it's not just about knowing he was sent and believing in the message, it's about knowing him as in having a relationship with him. This life that he's talking about, real and eternal life, is about knowing God and having a relationship with him. It doesn't start later. It starts as soon as you trust and believe in him. Jesus, as we see throughout this passage, has revealed God the Father to the disciples and to us. He says in verse 6, I have revealed you. And then later in 26, he says, I have revealed you to them and I'll continue to do so. It was cool to have the opportunity to do Bible study at St. Mary's on Tuesday. And uh, there was something that Brad actually mentioned that that stood out from this passage. We were all kind of looking at uh, these verses. And there's a bit of a pattern throughout. He noticed something of a triangle that happens. There's this idea of of Jesus is is really saying, Father, uh, you sent me and then I've, you know, revealed you to the Uh, to the disciples, and there's this kind of triangular thing going on. And as I started reflecting on that and throughout the rest of the week, I noticed that there's kind of a triangle, but it starts because of this fulcrum, which isn't a word that we use every day, but Jesus is really the fulcrum between us and the Father. He's the in-between. Things pivot on him, but then he gives us this direct line, and that's where the triangle kind of comes in, because the Father sent the Son to us, And the Son revealed the Father to us. And now we have this direct line to the Father, which we learned about last week. The Son sends us into the world to help us actually reveal the Son through his message to the world. So the question really would be, do we become the fulcrum between the world and Jesus? Do we help them have a direct line to him? I love this thought about the the gospel, and I've reflected on it often in the last couple of years. The gospel, if it was an equation, could be summed up this way, fully known on one hand and truly loved on the other. There's this idea that he knows us completely, and I've heard on the negative side, someone could say, well, but does he know about this? Does he know all of this dark and negative stuff? Yeah, he knows that he knows you fully, yet you're truly loved. You're truly loved in spite of it and before dealing with that. And so he loves us anyway. So the gospel is really that we're fully known and that we're truly loved. And here's how we know. It's the other 316, 1 John. It's a letter John actually sent around. 1 John 316 starts this way. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. I just need to read that again, just in, just in case that it's, it's just so short and, and, and sweet to the point. 
we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. We're going into a week where we're going to acknowledge that. We're going to sit with that. We're also celebrating that. Jesus finished what he was sent to do. Verse 4 of John 17 says, I brought you glory here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Aren't you glad that he did that? And the, the toughest task that he had was at the very end. The true finish is what we're going to look at on Friday, where in John 19, 30, Jesus said, it is finished. And then he bowed his head and released his spirit. This is how much he loves us. We have looked at John 3.16. Yeah, the first John 3.16 that we usually think about that reads, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. I think it's important to know we kind of connect Christmas and Easter because Jesus was born, but he wasn't just born, he was sent. He didn't just appear, he was actually sent on a mission, and yes, started as a baby, but he's not just human, he's the son of God on mission to save us. He's actually wanting the world to know that he was sent. He was sent, and you were loved. You have to kind of sit with that just for a moment. He was sent because you were loved. Jesus was sent because you're loved by God. And that's why John 3.16 is so relevant to us. And how do we respond to a verse like that, aside from just memorizing it and just quoting it? You know, that believe, I've noticed this for a while, but I, I think believe is, is often thought of as just something in the head or maybe just in the heart, but it also means to put faith in or to trust in, which is a little more active than passive. It's not just in the mind or heart. It implies action, and the action is to follow. You could actually think of it like so that everyone who trusts, everyone who trusts and, in our case, follows and continues to follow. So when it says everyone who believes in him, yes, believe in the sense of trusting, putting active faith in Jesus. Believing in him means you put your trust in him. Following him is the action of believing in him and trust and follow and then keep trusting and following. I love also later in John's letter, 1 John 4.16 says, We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in him. That's the idea. If you think about John being someone who spent all of that time with Jesus, then he finally understands what he actually shared with us in John 3.16, he's saying, no, we, we understand this. This is something that was shared with Nicodemus at night one time before anything happened on the cross and before Jesus was raised from the dead. And John's saying, no, we, we understand more. We, we now know completely what the gospel means. It's, it's Jesus. We trust in him. We trust in his love. God loved us so much that he gave Jesus to us. So Jesus was sent into the world, and then Jesus sent his disciples into the world with his message of God's love for us. We are actually his disciples, and we are sent into the world. And this is the world's hope that Jesus was sent, and now we are sent. Does that feel like hope? Well, we're actually given that to take to anyone we encounter. What Jesus is praying to the Father and saying, stating to him in John 17, verse 18, is just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. And so again, this is really the bottom line. This is the takeaway today, that we are sent so that the world might believe that he was sent. We are sent so that the world might believe that he was sent. And unpacking that is really uh, underlying the gospel message for us that, that people anywhere and everywhere in this world, they're, they're, they're actually fully known. Jesus knows them and he was sent for them and they're actually truly loved and he wants them to be saved, to know him. But the question often comes up when we talk about the world is, what's the world? If you think about the world that, that we're in, uh, I've heard someone talk about this who lives in New York City. Their world uh, wouldn't be 
all of New York City, it would be really whatever's in walking distance from their apartment. Do you know what I mean? So their world is as big as, as, as the area that they can either walk to or take a subway to. Um, for some businesses, if they want to be the best in the world, but they're just a local business, they have to be best in their world. And, and certainly there are some that have to be best in the entire world. But here's what it means for us as we're unpacking this today. To God, the world means the people in the world and actually all of the people. But to you and me, it actually means the people around you and me. But possibly, it is true, possibly it means across the world. Possibly it means anywhere in the world if that's where he sends you or if that's where he sends me. And we just are realizing here that Jesus prayed for us and for all who will ever believe. And potentially, we get to carry that message to someone else. I love verse 20 because this is when we were reading that prayer of Jesus. And it it should make you feel special that he was praying not just for the disciples that were in earshot of this, but actually for, for those of us in this room and online. In verse 20... Jesus says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Isn't that you and me? That's for all of us. He's praying for us there before he went to the cross. And he's believing and stating that this message is effective. What that means is that it actually is, is, is true that this message carried on generation after generation, not just um, being left with the initial disciples and apostles, but it made it all the way to us. Aren't you glad? This message is effective, and we are evidence of this. We can share it confidently, knowing that it's effective, because the message of Jesus changes lives. It's changed mine. How about for you? Sometimes I reflect back, and this makes me feel ancient, or, or at least a little bit older than I think that I actually am, but this summer is going to be 25 years for me since I started following Jesus. So that, that's a quarter of a century, right? Quarter life crisis, anyone? I don't know. The reason that I'm a pastor, the reason that I'm sharing this message today, is the reason that I initially became a follower of Jesus, it's, it's because of a lot of things. It's definitely because my grandmother drugged me to church. Dragged, drug, I think it's funny to just say, has, has anyone been drugged to church before? I was pushed to church, I was drugged to church, I was made to sit down. I even got scolded when I took my Spider-Man mask when I was four. Anyway, that's another story. You don't need to hear about that today. I'll, I'll just vent another time. But people like my grandmother prayed for me. But even one of my best friends in middle school prayed for me. People at his church prayed for me. People at the camp that they invited me to prayed for me. People shared the message of the gospel with me. People actually brought me into their community because I was in their world, right? I didn't have to be on the other side of the world for someone that was in Devon. uh, But but there there I was, and, and they brought it to me, and they were sent to me. I believe that. But in the same moment that I started realizing that, no, Jesus is real. It's not just a cool story. It's not just this epic. It's, it's that Jesus is, is real and actually cares about me, knows me completely, and I can trust him to forgive me of my sins. I can trust him that I could actually have a relationship with him. And so when I was 16, not only did I start following him in that moment, but I felt called. I felt not just called to follow him, Uh, But to actually go into ministry, whatever that means, I'm still figuring that out. But I was called to follow Jesus. I was called to trust in him, but I felt also called to to become a a minister. Um, The last thing that you could have got me to do when I was 16 is talk in front of any more than one other person. And so it wasn't something that uh, I would have naturally desired or, or preferred, uh, but it was overwhelmingly clear that that was what I was supposed to set out on is to do that because someone prayed for me. I was a part of their world. They were sent to me uh, to bring me into a community just like this one. It's actually part of this prayer being answered was that someone answered that prayer in their life and then they answered it in my life. That's how and why I'm here today, to make his mission, the mission of Jesus, my mission, to be sent now, sent sounds funny to me because uh, I started in Devon, made it really far, all the way to Marysville, 
And uh, so, so, yeah, sometimes your world isn't across the world, but it's actually in your community that you're already in, and sometimes that's crystal clear. Your world, it's probably your school, if you're still a student. Your world is definitely your neighborhood, because you live in one. Uh, your world is your workplace, if you're still working. It's the people around you as you go throughout your world. But absolutely, it's entirely possible. It's happened even within this church that God called someone not just to follow him and follow behind as they're still in this general area, but even to go to the ends of the earth. If that's where God sends you, uh, then accept that call. But perhaps it's just to go next door. Uh, for me, that, that sounds like what it is. I think as... I was considering modern messaging. Yes, it's still important to uh, pick up a, a phone or to FaceTime, but like just speaking about mail and speaking about messaging in a digital form now, we often compile something and then hit send. And so really the application that I want us to consider today is something that I feel like I already accepted like 25 years ago is that whole hit send. As in not me hit send, but saying to Jesus, hit send. If you're going to send me somewhere, I'm willing to go. If you're going to equip me with your message, I'm on mission for you. Hit send, Jesus. Let, let me go wherever you want to send me. Would you be willing, would you be bold enough to say, hit send, even if it's just next door, even if it's just to a, a family member, often the hardest people to share with, but would you say, hit send? This is what it means. Jesus, I'm ready for you to hit send for me to deliver your message. It's not your message, it's Jesus' message. That's my mission. Would you say that to him, that it's, it's really becoming your mission to be sent by Jesus with a message about Jesus to the people around you that Jesus loves? The message of Jesus is good news for us and for the world around us. The team's going to come to lead us in a song, but hit send, that's it's clear as, as I can think. For me, I think it's still a, a continual um, kind of factor is, is that there's the, an initial kind of hit send. I'm, I'm going to follow you, and if you want to send me somewhere, I'm trusting that you're going to uh, be with me as I go. You're going to equip me as I go. Uh, but for those of us, it doesn't just mean that you're called to, to do it with a microphone. Actually, you're probably uh, way more equipped to, to actually reach way more people than, than I could. But this is how uh, he wants to use me at this time. And so would you consider saying that to him? Jesus, uh, I, I believe in this. I, I believe that this prayer that you prayed, not just for your initial disciples, but thankfully their message made it to me. How can I help that message make it? to the people you care about in the world around me, even to the ends of the earth if that's where you want to send me. So we believe that prayer changes things. We all need prayer. I need prayer. The world needs prayer. Jesus prayed for us. How cool is that? And we can be a part of answering the prayer that he has for the world, that he prayed many years ago before he went to the cross to truly prove his love for us. He knows us completely, and he trusts us with this, to, to be sent, to live sent. He was sent into the world. He wants the world to know that, to understand how much that he cares about them. So this is all about God's mission. It's all about his message for the world, that Jesus was sent into the world, and now Jesus is sending us into the world, or at least our world around us. We know the mission, and we have his message, and he's sending us on a mission with his message. The gospel isn't just a story about escaping death. It's about defeating it. It's a story about life. It's not just about a long life. It's actually about a full one. And what does it mean? It's to have a relationship with God. That is eternal life because he is eternal. And he wants us to be with him. And that relationship is called eternal life. It starts now if you want it to. Jesus was willing to face death so that we could have life forever. Believing, meaning really trusting in Jesus, leaning into him is where it all begins. That message is actually for us. We receive that. That message is for the world. And now we're sent to give that message to the world around us. Why? 
because we are sent so that the world might believe that he was sent.